Going house to house, not to not to switch off everybody. We are cooking at home now because we notice that there is no load shedding. All of a sudden, the electricity is gone. Meanwhile, City Power's Head of Revenue Management, Tamsang Ngamatiso, has defended the blanket approach, saying there's a culture of non-payment in Naturina. The city has reviewed its credit control policy and, and people think that when they pay for electricity or on their prepaid, it's enough. It's a packaged uh, service. And fortunately, the city uses electricity to collect for other services. And controversial author Jackie Pamotzi has lost her defamation battle against celebrity power couple Romeo and Basitsana Kumalo. Pamotzi was taken to court over her 2018 tweet about an alleged sex tape involving the couple. The state argued that although Pamotzi did not name the Kumalos, she tweeted with the intent to defame them. The magistrate presiding over the matter says Pamotzi is guilty of criminal injuria, criminal defamation and contempt of court. Her version that the words in the, book, in the said book was an opinion piece that she did not intend to defame Mrs. Pumalo and that the words complained of are not defamatory, are rejected as false beyond a reasonable doubt. A partly cloudy Wednesday in store for Gauteng, otherwise fine later. Temperatures peaking between 29 and 31 degrees. The top story this hour, a property developer has provided insight into the dark underbelly of hijacked buildings within Joburg's ailing inner city. Eyewitness News on 947. For more, click ewn.co.za. You may begin to feel anxious or excited. Honest, deliberate, engaging, uncensored. High dosage administration can cause adverse reactions. And most importantly, independent in mind and execution. This is a normal response. Are you ready? Where are the sports worldwide? Leclerc's tyres really are finished. You can hear the cheers of the crowd here. Over two. Oh, now it goes off the Mercedes and into the barrier goes George Russell. That is a such an unfair end to his race. Let me start uh, with the box who put a very, very brave uh, display over the weekend. Mr. Marrow, I was very, very happy with the, their performance. Bulimsa, lovely pass to Bully LaRue. He's got pace. He's got hands. And Tiki say he's building from the back. He's building a solid back line. He's defending well at the expense of what? Of a takey. Uh, Deb is joining us talking about the whole issue around the purchasing of statuses. What do you make of it? Uh, it's actually nonsense, uh, uh, Rob. I think that is why we don't have crowds in our stadium because these teams must be community-based. Well, Blank Leopard sitting second from the bottom. Milford, a rock bottom there. Baraka, Venda, Platinum City, all bottom half of the table. Yeah, you might say early days. Yeah. Which clearly indicates that you cannot buy your way into football. Robert Marawa, live on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Sowetan Live. Hashtag MSW. Streaming from 13 September on Disney Plus, the football underdog story. Welcome to Wrexham brings you Marawa Sports Worldwide live on 947 Rise, Vuma, and Sowetan Live. Marawa Sports Worldwide brought to you by Season Two of Welcome to Wrexham. Streaming now on Disney Plus live on 947 Rise FM, Vuma FM, and Sowetan Live. Good evening. Welcome to the show. We're going to be marking the return, yes, of the very key factors as far as rugby is concerned here in South Africa. Let me give you a taste of what it is. It's an ever clear fact that rugby analysis is still stuck in the year 2015. Just one flimsy opinion against another. With no empirical evidence to back up these statements, the room dividers will change all that. Every Tuesday, feel the heat as Robert, Dando and Ashwin ask the hard questions on hashtag MSW on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM and Soweto Live. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. 
Well, tell you what, the city of Tswane, as well as the entire South Africa, is at the moment buzzing with excitement as it gears up for the... I mean, it's a spectacle. It's going to be hosting the World Rowing Masters Regatta, where Rodeprod Dam will meet the rowers with the world's most competitive waters. Rowing SA President Sean, good to see you, man. Welcome to the show. Historic, though. First ever on the continent. Yeah, Robert, we're pretty privileged. Um, and uh, thank World Rowing for attributing the event to South Africa. It shows, um, it shows confidence in what they think our abilities are to, to host an event um, and we will host we will host a world class regatta at Rotary Plus Hashtag MSW Hashtag MSW All right, looking forward to it. As I say, that uh, tonight is going to be UEFA Champions League coming back, taking center stage. And we certainly can't wait for that. I'll tell you in just a second uh, what you can expect from the UEFA Champions League. Uh, more rugby, room dividers are going to be launching tonight here on the show. Uh, we'll take your input as well. Having just spoken in the first segment of the show to Coach Ennis Middendorp, uh, who tells hashtag MSW on 947 that yeah he has quit he is in the country he's not looking for a job he says don't worry cape town uh, i am not heading off uh, there to that part of the world uh, I, i'm quite happy i'll find a job but it doesn't have to be he says leave those two coaches alone those were his words right here on hashtag msw so if they're going and trying to be the champions that's not the way that they're looking to try and get on to the other side of things. But yeah, looking forward to Thank you so much indeed to Coach Ernest Bittendorp uh, for having dropped by right here on hashtag MSW. Talked about UEFA Champions League. Well, it's a big day because guess what? Yeah, Newcastle United returning to the UEFA Champions League for the very first time in 21 seasons uh, with a glamour contest at the St. Siro against last season's semi-finalist AC Milan. Now, while well, the Magpies are in the group stage uh, for the very first time since 2002-2003 and just the third overall, seven-time European champions Milan are featuring for the third season in a row and last season reaching the knockout rounds uh, for the first time since 2013-2014. Now, this is the side's first meeting and each will be eager for an opening victory with the French champions uh, Paris Saint-Germain as well as Borussia Dortmund uh, also in Group F. So looking forward to it, Eddie Howe is the coach. Yeah, I think it'll be a proud moment for me. I think it'll be a proud moment for everyone connected with Newcastle to be back into the Champions League after a long period away. But it is a game of football and I think that's just how we have to approach it. Yes, we are, it's a special game and we have to be at our best and there's slight differences in terms of where we've travelled. But the game will be the same, but it will be a very difficult one. AC Milan have real quality, uh, a quality coach. who's done an incredible job here. Um, as you say, players with Premier League experience, I don't think anything new for, for them. Um, top quality players, I think they've recruited well in the summer as well. So uh, we anticipate a very, uh, a very big challenge in front of us. All right, big, big challenge indeed coming through for Eddie Howe as well as his charges. Talk about uh, Newcastle. Wishing them the best of luck, though, given their recent performance domestically. Uh, can they come good? Manchester City, though, Pep Guardiola believing that they haven't done anything special by winning a single Champions League title. City lifted their first major European trophy in Istanbul in June. Uh, but according to Guardiola, well, the coach says he believes that the club need to win multiple titles to be likened uh, to the other top clubs that are in Europe. And I would imagine that he'll be talking about the likes of Real Madrid. Will it be harder to defend it than it was to win it for the first time in the Champions League? No, it's easier. The most difficult is win the first one. The first one. Always we win, but it's something incredible for us the first time in this history. But it just won, so let's go. Let's try to win tomorrow. And a team like is so aggressive, so fast up front. Uh, we saw yesterday in this morning. And yeah, you have to 
interpret it or read perfectly the game you have to play. The interpretation of what needs to be done as far as the coach Pep Guardiola is concerned. Well, another highlight uh, for tonight, another highlight for the UEFA Champions League, Red Star Belgrade winning last season's Serbian title without losing a single game. But they changed managers, though, this season and have lost two of their last three games under Barak Baka. Baka is also hoping for a better showing, though, against City. Yes, I heard it. It's nice to hear that from the best coach in, uh, in the history of football for me. But we all, with all this respect, we have game and we need to, to, to play good and make a good result. We don't need compliments. I need a good game. And for me, what's important is to play brave. That uh, After the game, I, I sit in my chair and I say to myself, we did everything to do a good result. I don't speak about the result. I want to see my team, a brave team, play attractive. Play smart, of course, we cannot press all the time, but we need to play our game. I will not say here what I'm going to change and how I'm going to play, but of course we must be ready because we play against the best team maybe in the world. So we must make the adaptation, we must raise our level, and we know it. I believe in my team. And like I said, for me, it's important that you play like we plan. We have a good plan for the game, and I hope we, we have a good days for all the team. Of course, we need Manchester City have a bad days and a little luck also. Hashtag MSW. Suppressing lies and allowing you fresh and unfiltered sporting engagement. It's more than just analysis, it's a lifestyle. Every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m., The Room Dividers, Robert, Tando and Ashwin, interrogating more than just rugby issues. Tune in on Tuesdays for the experience. Vuma FM, Rise FM and Soweto Live. Well, I always say that be careful of what you wish for, be careful of what you ask for, because those things might just come true. And now, I suppose one of those segments of the show that I know many of you have missed and have been asking and have been suggesting, dropping hints on social media, I suppose everywhere I go, the calls, the texts, flooding in, and you'll speak the same language. And I understand, I understand why there's been a hunger and a desire for this saying hey guys we missed the room dividers we missed the room dividers and and i get why because i've certainly missed interacting and also deliberating um, on rugby uh, with this eloquent thought-provoking duo uh, we'll rotate our additional guest coming off coming off the bench depth of knowledge the core of their passion certainly making them uh, the heartbeat of the show and you as well, because this is, again, this is your show. It's about your interaction as far as what you've been watching, especially within uh, the Rugby World Cup so far, the Springboks, how they've performed, etc. But it's back. It's bigger. It's bolder. It's louder. Rugby like you've never heard it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the Room Dividers. Ashwin Phillips sir, joins me. Tando Manana, who's a special projects manager and also a former Barclays forward. Tando, good to see you. Welcome to the show. Good afternoon, Rob. Uh, I thought I thought it's starting next week. No, no, no. I know it's jet lag. It's called jet lag when you've been traveling so far. So that's out. why you are harassing me. All the time you've been harassing me to come back and come back. And, and I must come here. No, Rob. But uh, it's good to be back. I think, yes, yes, Rob, I've, I've enjoyed this World Cup. I don't know about other people. I've, I've really enjoyed it, Ash. I think, um, you know, to, 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 to for once. I don't hear All Blacks as a favorite to win for once. It's something yeah. new to me. Uh, but also, I think people are undermining, you know, the South African team uh, in terms of how far they can go in this competition. So that for me is important. I think this weekend's game is important. I think the game against Scotland was a do or die for us. And I mean, for us to suffocate them in the way we did and only mm -hmm. just give them three points, uh, you know, it just pleases me. And I think people have got to take note that the Springboks have only conceded three points from two games, you know, whereby yeah. from, an, from an Irish perspective, 
Uh, you know, they've they've conceded two tries, you know, from both their last games, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that mm -hmm. they've played in the same group. So they still have to play Scotland. And Scotland is a big, big uh, desire to beat, you know, the Irish. So if, mm -hmm. if the Scottish then beat the Ireland and then it becomes a points issue for, for all the teams in Group B. So for me, I think we, we, we have probably the best five, I mean, Rugby World Cup, um, the 10th edition. Why I say that one? Once again, the French believe mm -hmm. they can win the, the, the tournament too. Ireland, I think they've never played in a semi-final of a Rugby World Cup, and yet they believe they can go all the way to the final. And South Africa are on the verge of becoming the first team to win it fourth, mm -hmm. uh, fourth time, but also Sia Colisi to become only the second player to win it back-to-back. -back. A lot of permutations, but I think for us, everyone is so glued up on TVs, and I think this weekend is not going to be different than the last two. Well, we're looking forward to it without a doubt. I think this man went straight into analysis <laughs> mode here. I mean, I was like, hey, no, okay, how about show, just saying, no, It's an hour show. It's an hour show. So we get the straight to the business. The, the quicker, the better. <laughs> Tando was just reminding me that he's been to every World Cup. So he's been there 2007, you know, so yeah. he's been there with this one. So you can see, Rob, no, um, I think... Ashwin, that, fo we, firstly, we, welcome, welcome. Ah, and and, and so great much. to have you as part of the Room ah, Dividers, man. Thank you so much. Um, you know, really appreciate it. And I mean... Imagine Fiji losing or beating uh, Australia, oh. you know, uh, with everything mm. you've just said, then mm. you put that on top, you know, mm. and the opening game, France mm. beating New Zealand. So it, already there's all of the signs to show that this is potentially that World Cup. When we get to the knockout stages mm. where, mm. you know, magic can really happen. Mm. And the, the supporters everywhere, you, you see it is, it is, it is the, the TikTok World Cup. So where the World Cup before used to be, you know, you wait and then you hear and then you listen to the analysis. Now, you, whilst you're watching the game, you yeah. hear the analysis. Yeah. Completely different to what yeah. we've seen um, so far. So, you know, edge of the seat stuff. Um, you know, we as, as, as players, I think when you, when you get to this, this part of the competition, it's almost like a round robin. It's a festival, yes. you know, because you're still busy feeling it out. Mm. And I think, you know, to everything that, that Tando has sort of, highlight that it's really that uh, for me that I've seen so far. You can't really pinpoint what's happening. You, you, I mean, if you look at Ireland, yeah. I saw um, a status of one of my friends, um, this quote by Rossi, he said that he heard some of his friends are saying that Ireland is South Africa's bogey team. Mm. He says, oh, let me remind you that the, the World Cup is uh, Ireland's bogey competition. So, oh. so, yeah, yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. you can see all of a sudden, um, Ireland, the top team in the world, mm. playing against South Africa, one and two playing against other this, this weekend mm. as a round robin, when you, you can't really tell how it's going to land up in the quarterfinals, mm. you know, what's mm. going to happen in the semifinals. So I think out of all the World Cups to date that I've sort of you know, been part of and also have seen and watched, I think this one really has the potential to build up to that atmosphere mm. of knockout stages right from mm. the onset. So when you're going to quarterfinals, it is a final for mm. every team that yeah. is there. We always say it, but this World Cup, I feel like the tension is building up towards that uh, culmination ultimately. So you're agreeing with Tando. Tando was saying that there's no favourite. Uh, New Zealand is not the favourite. So mm. for the first time, everybody can say, okay, it potentially is my World Cup. Are you agreeing with that opening statement? In fact, so much so, I want to say that the only team, um, if you look at, 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 as a South African, as a Springbok, I would you know, guard and say, listen, this is our World Cup for the taking. We've yeah. got all of, everything that we require is right there to win this World Cup. The All Blacks, you know, All Blacks can lose 100 nil today and come back tomorrow and beat you 300 nil. That's the type, that's the All Blacks, you know. But when you look at them and you compare them and you see how they've been performing, then you, all of a sudden you reach a point where you realize that the All Blacks are no longer the team that they used to be in mm -hmm. every other World Cup. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of who can ultimately win it, um, it's widely open. Anyone can take it. And if you ask me, I think the team really to sort of, be afraid of is the French team currently because mm -hmm. it's at home that mm -hmm. passion you talk mm -hmm. about I mean every stadium comes alive mm -hmm. regardless of who's playing yeah. so mm -hmm. imagine you are the host nation in this contentious World Cup mm -hmm. so imagine what that must be like you know it's, uh, and the man that just come clouds. back I mean the man that just come yeah. back from France he was complaining saying that the way they treated so seriously the locals in France mm -hmm. that for every game like you rightfully say mm -hmm. they go to the stadium almost dressed like mm -hmm. they're going to a launch of a movie. That, those are the <laughs> it's French. A mm. Yeah, it's, it's a premium of something. So it, it, it is a classy World Cup. And when you come back from the break, you're going to be including as well as part of our conversation. As I said, this is a room dividers. Mike Greenaway, uh, who is independent media rugby writer as well as an author, uh, who will join us for his opinion. What's your opinion as well? Join the conversation. Back on your radio by popular demand. 
It's the infamous Room Dividers with Robert Marawa, Tanda Manana and Ashwin Willemser. Tuesdays on hashtag MSW947. Vuma FM, Rise FM and Soweto Live. Lotto Stars Live Games will keep you at the edge of your seat. Whether you're a card, dice or money wheel fanatic, there's a live game for you. So, bet now on our blackjack, poker, roulette, game shows, first person or baccarat and sick bow. You could win instant payouts of up to 10 million rand. Lotto Star, your world of live games. Lotto Star is licensed by the Impomalanga Economic Regulator. No under 18s. National Responsible Gambling Program. 0800 006008. T's and C's apply. All games are fixed on betting events. Don't you wish you can swap your old phone for a brand new foldable one? Get the Galaxy Z Flip 5 today. Trade in your old phone and get a guaranteed 15,000 Rand cash back into your pocket. Samsung Trade In really is the easiest and most affordable way to get the phone you want. Visit Samsung.com for more information and quick steps to follow. The new Galaxy Z Flip 5. Join the flip side. T's and C's apply. Who wants to hear some T's and C's? I don't. But yeah, there are anyway. Pineapple FSP 48650 is underwritten by Old Mutual Insurer, a licensed FSP and non-life insurer. T's and C's apply. I mean, really, what a waste of time. Yes, this is another version of the ridiculously short 30-second pineapple ad. Go to pineapple.co.za for 100% insurance, 0% other stuff. Where once again, thanks to the verbose mandatory T's and C's I just mentioned, we're not going to find out more about... Green is gold at Food Lovers Market and we're celebrating with Big Deal Wednesday. Enjoy pork brie chops at only $59.99 per kilo. That's pork brie chops for a low $59.99 per kilo. And buy a 250 gram strawberry punnet and a 125 gram blueberry punnet for 35 rand. And get a banana thrift pack absolutely free. Valid this Wednesday only at all inland Food Lovers Market stores. The best in fresh, guaranteed. I got the job, but to make that first impression count, I needed a standout CV. I went to Postnet and had my CV professionally printed and bound. They even did my criminal record check. Postnet's got it all. Thanks to Postnet, I went from job hunting to job getting. Because at Postnet, we're not just a store. We're your neighbor. Postnet, turning dreams into destinies, one print at a time. Getting you across the line. Welcome to Wrexham returns to Disney Plus for a brand new season. The docuseries continues to follow the Wrexham football club, the town and its residents. The club extraordinarily positioned as an international prospect and is wallowing in the newly found limelight. Executive producers Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney have been welcomed into the community and in turn have totally fallen in love with the club. Welcome to Wrexham season 2 streaming from 13 September exclusively on Disney Plus. T's and C's apply. Marawa Sports Worldwide, powered by Welcome to Wrexham Season 2. Streaming from 13 September on Disney Plus, Rise, Vuma, and Sowetan Live. rugby stats understand sophisticated analytical arguments about your favorite player it's all available on 947 that hashtag msw Fuma fm rise fm and soweto live every tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m was robert tando and ashwin yeah ashwin villain sir is here in studio. Tanda Banana is here as well. You can give us a call on 11-883-8947. Otherwise, drop us a WhatsApp voice note 0704 and get in touch. Give us your comments. They've given us uh, their outline as far as the Rugby World Cup is concerned. We're going to bring in another Brains Trust into the mix. Uh, he is an independent media rugby writer, also author of a book on Springbok history, uh, the Fireside Springbok. What an honor to have on the line Mike Greenaway for his contribution on The Room Divide. Is, uh, Mike, thank you so much for your time. Good evening. Good evening. Sure. Rugby World Cup. Here we are. We've started. 
A big one coming up this weekend, Mike. What have you made of the tournament so far and expectations for the weekend? Uh, yeah, it doesn't get bigger than this. Uh, I, I can't wait. Num- number one and two in the world. Both teams haven't put a foot wrong in the tournament so far. Um, two great packs of forwards. Uh, maybe contrasting back lines a little bit. Contrasting generals. I, I think I can't wait to see Johnny Sexton uh, versus Armani Libok. Uh, maybe that is one one area where there's a glaring difference. The experience of, of, of Johnny and how he controls the game um, and, and is a very steady influence for Ireland. And then we've got Marnie, who's, uh, who's, who's dynamic, you know, and has, has really uh, come to the fore. Uh, is he going to unleash the box backs? Uh, are they going to play more conservatively? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of intrigue uh, in the build-up to this game. I, I can't wait. Yeah, I know that Coach Rusty was talking about just the influence um, of a Johnny Sexton as far as the makeup is concerned, talking about his presence and the kind of influence he has and how a lot of people, not only just the opposition in the world, look up to him. But Rusty, again, a man to pull a rabbit out of a hat. Uh, will he go, what, 7-1 forward split on the bench? Man, uh, we, well, we'll see later on this evening. The team is being being announced. Um, yeah, in fact, it, it should be om- almost any minute. Uh, I, I've got a feeling it probably will be. Um, you know, what worked against Scotland, how we just squeezed the life out of them uh, and 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 against uh, the All Blacks at Twickenham, that was just merciless, relentless springbok forward pressure. And and that's, you know, what, what worked in those two great victories, surely we, we're going to go to that. I just would like to see uh, us not go into our shells um, you know, I'd like the Springboks to play with, with, with their backs. I mean, in, in the past, we've had that forward power where we just crush people, but that was 2019. And what worked then isn't going to bring the cup home again, I don't believe. So I just hope that we have that forward power, but then we, we, we see Barney bringing the backs into play because we really can score tries now. And we, we maybe didn't, didn't have those arrows in our quiver a few years ago, but we really are working towards being a, a more all-round attacking team. Uh, so, yeah, I just, I just hope the guys go for it and they don't just go back to that box kicking and, you know, the, the forward uh, mauling and that. And I just hope that Rusty and Jock just say to the guys, come on, go for it. Just, just back yourselves. Let's score some tries. Let's, let's annihilate them. I think that's the word every Springbok <laughs> support will want to hear, Mike. I've got some crazy gentlemen here in studio. Ashwin Willem says, what well, does Tando Manana as part of the room dividers? And uh, I'm going to ask you to stay on. Please drop in at any time. This is not a formal uh, interview. It's a conversation about rugby, including, obviously, the listeners that are listening in. They can call us on yeah. 011 947 Otherwise, drop us a WhatsApp voice note, 060-708-0484. Just on some of the pointers, gentlemen, Tando, let me come to you. The 7-1 yeah. split that we talked about off the bench. Yeah. Uh, would he do that we saw the success thereof uh, in the 35-7 you know victory against New Zealand I mean if I was the coach I wouldn't go for a 7-1 I'll go for a 6-2 definitely for yeah. a 6-2 obviously Grant Williams and having um, a Villiers you know as, mm. as the only back line on the bench and then use uh, that 6-2 split obviously we're missing the best hooker in the world and that's Malcolm Marx but I think for us we know that the bomb squad has not really kicked in but we know what the front rower did the last time uh, like Mike has said when mm-hmm. we played Scotland I mean Trevor Ox and you look at uh, Bongim Bonami they demolished them especially in the second half and once again I think for me what's important why I say we need that 2-6-2 two, two split you, you've got Great players, you know, that the island can can field. You've got, you know, the likes of Keith Earls, James Lowe, and, you know, uh, without even mentioning, you know, Sexton. Yeah. Bandi Aki has been in tremendous form. Whether he's going to partner with Ring Rose, that's another subject, you know, for another day. But also I think what's important for me is the front row of the, of the Irish, you know. Uh, we're going to meet them toe to toe. But listen. They, they, they've been good at it. They've been doing well. Rob Herring is probably the best hooker now in the world with the absence of marks. So for me, 6-2, I would definitely go with that, Rob. And one thing I pick up from Mike, which is something that I, I'm also saying from my side, is less kicking the better for the box against an Irish side. They're well prepared side that if you look over the last four years what Andy Farrell has did to them, 
he learned his mistakes from the English where he concentrated more on their fitness uh, when he was still coaching there. But now this time around, he's allowed them to work and, and, and have a dual sort of a setup of fitness fused in with ball in hand, which means they can do the chase lines. They can prepare and organize their D lines on time. And that's why if you look even in the URC, you know, uh, many South African teams struggle to have 10 over balls against an Irish team. So that's now embedded in their veins. Uh, it's, 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 it's part of... It's, it's, it, you know, it's part of their embryo, for example, which leads then out to the senior side. For me, South Africa, they've got to keep the ball, make sure they make, give us good clean ball for Mani Lipok and, and Damien uh, Dialinda going forward. The, the more you kick, that's what the Australia saw against Fiji. They, you know, if you kick more, they're going to attack you and they're going to score tries. And that's what they want. Becoming it's, a bit more uh, vulnerable. So less kicking is what Tando is suggesting. Would you go along with that, Ashwin? I think it speaks directly to what Mike also have alluded to, is the yeah. fact that, you know, uh, based on also the split that Tando is suggesting, I mean, we talked about it before the mm. show. Um, I think what we really have now is we have the ability to go and, and challenge, you know, arm wrestling. So you can sit and you can really arm wrestle between mm. the pack of forwards. Mm. So we have the, the manpower. Mm. When we talk about... Um, the loss of uh, Malcolm Marx, he cannot be replaced. You don't mm -hmm. replace a Malcolm Marx. Mm -hmm. However, I think the pack of forwards, we have the ability to really go out and do a proper arm wrestle to test mm -hmm. it because, uh, in fact, uh, Mike's opening words, Teddy versus dynamic, yep. Sexton, mm -hmm. uh, Sexton versus Libok. So now, mm -hmm. imagine on the front foot, we are dominating mm -hmm. um, the collision. The forwards are really fronting up. And now you give a Mani Libok a front foot ball mm. um, all the time running at the, the, the defense. I mean, whether it's Bundy Aki, whoever's the mm. defensive line for the, 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 Irish. the Irish. I think what we have here is we have the ability to unleash an attacking prowess that we have all grown and become familiar uh, with. I mean, 2019 World Cup, we scored so many tries. Mm. I know there's a big question mark around goal kicking, which obviously is important in a World Cup. Yeah. Um, but here you have the ability and what we saw last weekend as well. I mean, from any part of the field, set phases, mm. second, third phases, our players can take the ball, create space and send um, our outside backs in. Um, you know, So that's what we have. So I, I, I fully agree with the fact that the, the battle up front um, you know, we, this is a cliche, you know, you have to win the battle up front. But I think the one now is way more dynamic because mm. what you have here is you've got two packs of forwards that has the ability to scrum like the best in the world, if not the best. Lineouts, win their own lineout ball. So you can determine your next three, four phases on attack. Mm. Now, any team that can assure that in, in an attacking play on the defense, what you, you have to be so organized. Now, what we've seen, and uh, Tandu has alluded to that as well, in terms of the points that we have given away so far in the competition, our, our defensive structures, mm. I mean, Jack Ninebay, I mean, this is like an attacking coach, yeah. I mean, a defensive coach. coach so, defensive, he, so, yeah. so a defensive coach, and here you have our tech being what it is. So you can see that from a defensive perspective, mm. regardless of what the Irish can throw at us, we have, mm. I think, the calmness. Mm. And also the, uh, the, the resilience mm. and then the, the communication on the field. Damien Dalinda um, at 12, I think he has shown that apart from just attacking, he has shown that because oftentimes we, we miss the importance of the 12 um, in terms of communication on, 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 on defense. Right. And yeah. that's what I believe Damien Dalinda brings to the party. So him from a, a defensive perspective, I think he can really organize. And from an attacking perspective, I mean, Lubbock, I mean, this guy can literally score and kick with his eyes closed and mm. no look. Well, his eyes looking yeah. elsewhere yes, while the ball is yes. going somewhere, but finding the target. Yeah. Mike, from just your you side, you're hearing the guys and there's a, an emphasis again on the pack, how well the pack is going to do. But then you look at... The Irish, they haven't lost a single scrum in the tournament so far. I think it's one of only five nations not to have done that. What does that mean and what do we have to do? Yeah, yeah. look, it, it's, you see, there, 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 there's, it kicks on from the set piece, you know, the scrum. The, the loose forward battle, I think, is where this game is going to be won and lost. So who's winning the scrums, um, that's going to influence how the, how the loose forwards come into play. You look at their ball carriers, uh, Josh van der Fleer, World Rugby Player of the Year. I think you know, if we can get on top of them, get that squeeze in the set pieces and just nullify those loose forwards of theirs a little bit, then that has a knock-on effect with Sexton. Um, so I think that loose forward battle is going to be absolutely crucial. I'd be interested to hear what the other guys have to, to say about that if they agree with me. Yeah, pop in, guys. 
And in fact, uh, before you go down to yeah. the expert on loose forwards, I think, but for me, what, what really, when it comes to loose, loose forwards, what you want to ha have is second, third uh, phase ball. You want to have it secured and your yeah. loose forwards are, are there to make sure that you, you seal it off and then also ball carrying. And I think, Tando, that's what we have in this uh, pack of forwards. And, mm. and so I'm not sure what your, your thinking is re with regards to that. Yeah, for me, I think, um, I mean, we, 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 we've spoken about, um, you know, uh, Kellen Doris. I've spoken about him, obviously, in the first game. Peter Omani, mm. you know, I think uh, he's a Trojan for, you know, for the Irish. And I mean, Van der Fleer, I mean, mm. he's still currently the, the best player in the world, you know, in terms of that rating. Mm. But for me, it's been good to see what a Peter St Steph Dutoit has yep. been able to put in. For me, it's also once again to, you know, to see Visse back to his own, you know, mm. because we're going to start with him and finish off with a Dwayne Vermeerling. That yeah. for me is players that work in tandem together. I mean, Sia has been exceptional, how he was brought in post the injury, how he was introduced just before the World Cup and how his leadership has been. But also, I think where, where I've been mostly surprised has been Mostet. Mossi, for me, has just taken that number five jersey as his own. And I'm not thinking about a Lua Diaga at this stage. <laughs> and, and I was worried because yeah. we didn't have a number five, Rob. So we speak of the Lucys, but I think we've got to understand the set pieces that, you, that we speak about. A scrum, the line out. The line out is going to be key. Bird. Uh, we're not playing Romania, who's not contesting now in the line out. Mm. Every line out is going to have a contest. Now, Bongim Bonambi, it's important. We, pay, we play him up until the 70th or 75th minute, like in the past when you had John Smith and you had other uh, hookers on the bench there because you knew how tight a game could be. So I think the only changes that's going to be a late change is going to be Bongi because we understand that we only have that specialist hooker in the team. But as far as the Loose forwards are concerned. Whether you play Marco van Staden, whether you play Dion, I mean Dion Fury, whoever is the hooker going forward. But I'm 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 having a sense. If we go for a six-two split, we lose a Quaja Smith. But then, depending on the game, now if you have these loose forwards, I would rather leave Marco out of the game and bring in someone like a Quaja Smith, who then will give me all the yardage. And also make sure when it's that uh, breakdown point. Because mm. remember, when it's breakdown, he tackles, he gets yeah. up, he drives again. So he's, he's not only mere tackling or going for the ball, he's doing more work than mm. a Marco van, you know, van Staden at this stage. So for me, I think, yes, the, it's going to be one there. But I think also, when you talk of the first channel, that's where Sexton and, you know, that's where money yeah. is. Bandi Aki. Yeah and D Damien Dialinda. I think that's where it's going to happen. I think our wings are not going to see a lot of balls. I know that we want to spread it out wide, but I think they're going to use their opportunities and look for work and just come in. I mean, Kirtley Arons has scored a try from the middle of the field, and yet people thought that he'd be waiting on the right wing to score those yeah, tries. And that's, that's also a good thing because how they bring the, the outside backs in, and that's what we've mm. seen against Romania, so you, you find that the outside backs are not just standing on the side waiting mm. for the ball. So mm. that's almost like you know the surprise package when you have the contest between the loose forwards and the, the tight forwards. I was about to say that's a coaching uh, element indeed, because mm. when, when you talk about the surprise yeah. element, it, it really comes from there. And, and the ability for the guys to be um, as versatile as that and the flair. I'm, I'm going to come back to you, um, Ash, because uh, I'm just reminding all the listeners right now that you can actually listen, watch, and comment on the YouTube channel. We are live on YouTube. Uh, I see a lot of comments already. Shiga says, what an honor and what an event uh, to be witnessing the return of the room dividers. I am humbled as a shareholder of the show. Uh, Sim Piwem Kajwa says that the room dividers says, rest in peace. Kawunda, absolutely one of the formative members of this uh, room dividers movement. A general salute coming from Boikanya Moloi. And uh, Shiga was saying that I agree with Ashwin uh, that we have everything to defend the cup and the tournament is currently there for anyone's taking. Uh, but I may add and say, until they meet the rootless Mapimpi and the silky Lebok, oh, we'll come back with those comments and more. Uh, please send us your WhatsApp voice notes. I see lots of them are streaming in. All right. I hear a lot of people saying New Zealand are there for the taking in the quarterfinal. I beg to diff. I would prefer the French. The New Zealand are like his achieves and Orlando Parade. It does not matter who is informed when you play against them. They, and they don't have problem beating us. Let's be honest. Yes, they are off form, but a New Zealand South Africa match is always a ham deal. I would prefer the French. It is you meet in France. If we get a lead, they will have to run the play the running game and the pressure of the supporters. And we just have to kick for territory to see a poiling pop Peter. 
Rugby analysis needs a reset. The Room Dividers, Robert Marawa, Tanda Manana and Ashwin Willemser supply us with sophisticated hardcore statistical analysis that opens up the game of rugby. Every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m., The Room Dividers is back on hashtag MSW on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM and Soweto Live. Yeah, going to be taking your calls as well as your comments right here on hashtag MSW on 947. Back on your radio by popular demand. It's the infamous Room Dividers with Robert Marawa, Tanda Manana and Ashwin Willemser. Tuesdays on hashtag MSW on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM and Soweto Live. Dad, imagine there was a car that could help save the planets. Well, we don't have to imagine, my boy. We drive a Haval HEV already. What do you mean? Haval's HEV range only uses half the fuel of a regular car. Halving your fuel means halving your emissions, which means saving, saving the, the planet. planet. <laughs> <laughs> Clever boy. Discover the Haval HEV range from under 490,000 Rand, including 60,000 Rand deal assist. Visit haval.co.za for more. It's time to celebrate what spa brings to your table. Look out for the talk of the table at your nearest spa for deals unique to your community. Fill your basket and fit your budget with offers like 800 gram Nescafe Recoffee Pouch. Rewards customers pay 79.99. Save 30 Rand. And two ply Baby Soft Toilet Tissues 18s. Rewards customers pay 129.99. Save 45. Brand. Activate your Spa Rewards card and save even more. Valid until 1 October while stocks last. T's and C's apply. Spa, we're for smiles. Allergex Non-Drowsy has been relieving South Africans one allergy at a time. We're all different and our allergies are too. This is why Allergex Non-Drowsy is available in both syrup and tablet form. All the sneezing, runny, itchy noses and throats, we've left no stone unturned. Our mission is simple, to help you live allergy-free with Allergex Non-Drowsy. Ask your pharmacist about the Allergex Non-Drowsy range, brought to you by Adcock Ingram, OTC. Sponsors of Brave. When you choose Plascon, you choose strong. And get your share of 10 million rand in guaranteed rewards. Spend a minimum of 1,500 Rand on any PlusCon products and claim your share. Plus, you'll be placed in the daily draw for the chance to win a 1,000 Rand grocery voucher and the fortnight draw for the chance to win one of seven inverters worth 10,000 Rand. Competition ends 30 September. T's and C's apply. Details at pluscon.com. The nature of HR. It's true, there are so many moving parts. It's not just about the processes, but also about the people. Ah. Everyone has their part to play because they're like different parts of a puzzle that you can put together to help the organization. Sage HR and payroll tools help HR champions spend less time on admin and more time bringing the team together. Sage, helping business flow. Visit sage.com today. Welcome to Wrexham returns to Disney Plus for a brand new season. The docuseries continues to follow the Wrexham Football Club, the town and its residents. The club extraordinarily positioned as an international prospect and is wallowing in the newly found limelight. Executive producers Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney have been welcomed into the community and in turn have totally fallen in love with the club. Welcome to Wrexham Season 2, streaming from 13 September, exclusively on Disney+. Plus. T's and C's apply. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. It's Motsepe Foundation Championship. It's scary there because the teams that bought statuses are languishing at the bottom of the league, which clearly indicates that you cannot buy your way into football. It clearly shows in the field of play. I mean, you look at the bottom part of that. Black Leopards got cut off and they were about to defend themselves in terms of continuously trying to earn their existence by buying. It's not what football is supposed to be. Oh, I get relegated, I uh, can go buy another club. How is that football? How is it on God's green earth? Called football. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Rugby analysis needs a reset. The room dividers. Robert Marawa, Tanda Manana, and Ashwin Willemser supply us with sophisticated, hardcore statistical analysis that opens up the game of rugby. Every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m., The Room Dividers is back on hashtag MSW on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Good evening, Mr. Rob. 
it's Hulafalangia and good evening to the MSW Shoulders and good evening to the Room Dividers. Hey, it's a, it's quite an interesting Rugby World Cup, eh? Uh, there's no such thing as this country is going to win or this country is going to win. As much as we may feel that, um, that no, the Springboks might successfully defend and retain their World Cup title, um, it's, it's an open tournament because if you have the likes of Fiji beating Australia, yeah, yeah, then it tells you that anything is possible. If you have New Zealand losing their game as well. Uh, I mean, it tells you that, man, the favourites are not so much of the favourites after all. Is that um, anybody can, um, you know, come in and punch in their weight. And it just tells us that every, every country that's participating in the World Cup, they need to be given their respect because they are showing us their every intent, um, you know, to win it all, go to the final and lift the Web Ellis title. But I personally feel that, you know, the Springboks can win it again. You know, they can successfully defend and retain the World Cup title. But uh, I feel that it could be a little bit more difficult this time round than it was in 2019. But again, we'll just see how this one's going to go. But it's an but it's an open one. It's, it really is an open tournament, if I am if I can say. Great show as always. Thanks. Open tournament. Tula Falang, thank you so much. Good evening, Rob. And the room dividers say, but this man, hey, I'm happy, Rob. So far, the way the Springboks they take the game seriously, doesn't matter if they're playing, they're playing with the with big team or small team, they take the game seriously. I'm impressed. Well, when you come to the quarterfinal, because I'm sure we're going to the quarterfinals. For me, I think this game is going to play on Sunday. I think for Springboks, it would be better for me if they lose the game, but with not a big matching score. Then, because I prefer to play with the host in the quarterfinal. I don't like uh, the All Blacks. They're not doing well, but when you come to knockout stages, the All Blacks, hey, they can show you other side. So for me, we will lose this game, but not with a big matching score, because I want to... Meet at the host in the quarterfinal. Thanks, Ropi. Yeah, lose the game, and not by a big score. All right, we're going to throw that uh, to our guest here. It is a room divided, if you're just joining us here. Uh, it's Ashwin Willems, uh, Tando Manana. And, of course, on the line, we've got Mike Greenaway, independent media, rugby writer, and also author of a book on Springbok history, uh, the Fireside Springbok. Uh, Mike, I don't know if any of those voice notes uh, tickle your fancy in terms of us losing, yeah. but not by a big margin. Yeah, well, I tell you what I'd like to pick up on there's a guy who's talking about it being an open tournament and, and anyone can win, and it's very difficult to say this country is definitely going to win. I think World Cups uh, historically are about peaking at the right time. Uh, you know, the All Blacks are <laughs> past masters at peaking in between World Cups. Um, they've been the best team in the world. I don't know how many before how many World Cups and then, then uh, corpsed on the big stage. Um, I have a suspicion Ireland may have played the best rugby. I, I'm hoping I'm right. But what I really do think is, and I'm not just being uh, stupidly patriotic, is I, I think the Springboks are on the right trajectory. Um, as I remember, we, we lost a year to rugby eh, with, with COVID. That, uh, we, we, we suffered... Um, uh, a lot more severely than, than other countries. I mean, we didn't play, after winning that World Cup in Japan, we didn't play for something like 18 months or something. We just lost all that development. And that has now been happening in the last 18 months. And I just, you know, last year when we were, we were, we were picking teams to play Wales that weren't our best and everyone was complaining, it was all part of a plan. And that was to get our depth uh, just right now for this exact time. And I do feel that uh, Rossi and Jacques have plotted and planned this um, almost perfectly. And I look also at how uh, some of our players are, are building so nicely. I mean, Peter Step de Toy um, is now getting to the form that he was in, in 2019. Look how well C is playing. In fact, if you look at all of our players, I can't think of anyone who's off form. If I think, can the Springboks go all the way? Uh, look, the other thing you need in World Cups is a little bit of luck. You need mm. that that refereeing decision, that 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 TMO decision. Maybe that bounce of the ball. Maybe that the the injuries need to go your way. But I do think the Springboks are peaking at the right time. All right, peaking at the right time. No yeah. one really off form. I think that's a key that Mike talks about, gentlemen. If tackle that. Yeah. If anything, I, I think if you look at the the balance of the of the Springbok squad, then you can see. And Mike points out so so beautifully that you can see that all of a sudden in every position, even um, um, fly half, you have a fly half 
where uh, you come and you see a Fav de Klerk playing fly out. Sure. Um, you know, so you can see that at a World Cup stage, you bring mm. in a Fav de Klerk to play. And so when we play Romania, it's almost like a trial game. You come, you bring mm. a whole new squad, a whole new team. You've got four scrum ups of, on the field at one point um, in the game. So you can see that for, for the box, it's really now about how do you refine the team and how do you put the team together that will take you through the knockout stages because I think that's where you really want to have mm. a, a solidified your squad. And in terms of momentum, we we are on that upward curve. We are we are rolling. And so I think if we if we gel and come together in terms of team selection, mm. then all of a sudden you can see that the the players that we have can beat any in any given team on any given day. Um, and that's what makes the All Blacks so difficult is that the All Blacks just needs one game to switch on. Yeah. And in that game, they can beat you by 100 points. Um, for us as South Africa, we can see that we are on the upward trajectory and has been uh, for a number of years now, um, if you look coming into this World Cup. And that's beautiful for me to see, um, at least now, Tando, in terms mm. of how um, the depth in... You know, if you look at... So depth... Lose forwards. Mm -hmm. You look at scrum halves, there's depth. If you look at, here we are sitting and you, you there's a Pollard coming back into the squad. I mm -hmm. mean, you're talking about a Pollard coming back into the squad while you have a number one, a contender for best fly off in the world, in the in, uh, incumbent. Yeah. So you can see that between the two, mm -hmm. and I mean, you've got two of the best fly offs in the world right mm -hmm. there. Uh, uh, Pollard has won a World Cup already. Mm -hmm. So that depth to have that going into the knockout stages. And you haven't even seen it coming together, but you know that this is the potential is there. I think South Africa can really be unstoppable going to, into the knockout stages. But they've also been very open about it. And, and I think that's one thing I've admired about how the technical team have talked about it. You know, some of the international media have been suggesting that the introduction of Pollard will divide the team divide the dynamic mm. that has already been there. But they said, no, definitely not for this game. Mm. Maybe for the Tonga game, uh, he will be considered. How have you dealt with how they have looked at the situation and said, you know what, let's be open and transparent? Rob, one thing that people must understand is when the team is announced, like Mike said, any time from today, yeah, the team has already been announced yesterday already. Mm. Players know who's yeah. playing against Ireland. We're going at each other, waiting for the match day 23. It's already sorted down in France because the players that will be taking on Ireland, they know who they are. Mm. But also I think what's important there, once again, Rob, is we've got to understand uh, that when you talk of the depth, let's go to Inside Centre where you have a Damien Dialind and Andre Esterhazen. Mm. Tell me which player has been able to tackle an Andre Esterhazen <laughs> head on. Tell me now in world <laughs> rugby. So we've got to understand that this is a team that knows their strength. Mm -hmm. I think they know how to deal with pressure. I think also what's important for me is they can shut down any team going forward. That's why I'm saying the less we kick and the more we put them under pressure on their D-line, the better than it is for our runners, for game over. For me, for example, I would love to have a guy like Andre Estesen being on the bench, take off Damon Dialinda, put on an Andre Estesen against a Bandi Aki and tire him out because he cannot continue that for 80 minutes because Ireland depends on him as a 12. They can rather bring in a replacement fly-off and move Sexton into inside centre because they, they're not well organised or well depth in terms of certain position on the wings brilliant wingers we know that top class wingers so i'm of the view colby kirtley will have a very long day but they're also going to be quite effective for us if opportunity do comes for us mm -hmm. but i think rob we've got to play to our strength we're not talking yeah. about that play to your strength and what is our strength it's our tight phases we've got to scrum well mm -hmm. we've got to really i mean well against a team like we said that's that correct. hasn't lost Remember, when, when we played Ireland, all right? Yes, we lost in, in Dublin. We lost because we had a poor goal kicker on the day. We lost 1916, guys. Mm. We should have won that game. We let slip eight points. Mm. So if you add eight from 16, it gives you 23-19 in mm. our favor. So therefore, what I'm trying to say here, Rob, is we've got to maximize the first phase possession Quick off the top, it's got to be quick, flat, money comes in, the rest is going to be history because we'll be playing all over and we've got good enough subs. Well, I'm going to come in yeah. here because I want to take a quick voice note here and also get a comment from Mike Ashwin as well as uh, Utando on something that I want them to just consider as we listen to this voice note. Would South Africa being the second worst for turnovers lost? What is the solution? Uh, Robert, greet you and your two guests uh, with a good heart. Three things. I've got goose pimples. Thanks for this program. 
Firstly, it reminds me what the lady said about the World Cup down in Australia. Banyana thought they could have won it because it was open. The second thing is I believe we peaked at absolutely the right moment. Moi blai. Moi blai, moi blai. We peaked at the right moment. Uh, Ashton, Willemse, Mike, uh, you, you guys both agree with that. <laughs> I, I let I let Mike, Mike go first. Yeah. <laughs> we picked at the right moment. Was that the question? Yeah, he he seems to think no, that. Yeah, I, I, I do I do guys, and I do I do think. So I, I, you know, I'll, I'll go back to where I started. I think we've got the forwards to diminish the influence of Johnny Sexton. That's what we want in this game. He is the master controller in rugby uh, these days. He he just. Uh, the, the Ireland danced to to his beat, and they are just so effective. Uh, uh, Linster as well. If our forwards can diminish what he does, unsettle him a little bit, and then at the same time that will allow our playmakers to come into the game. And if we can get Marnie putting uh, Damien over the advantage line, uh, and, and then we are patient. And if we just stick to those systems, I do think later in the game, hopefully, Kirtley and Cheslin will, will get those opportunities. I agree they might not see the ball for quite some time in the game, but if we just be patient and we just keep our nerve, I think that this game, a lot of it is, is going to be who keeps their nerve, who doesn't panic, who just grinds it out initially, and then the gaps hopefully will eventually come. But I do think we've got the forwards that uh, the, the teams that Ireland have beaten, their loose forwards have been uh, able to play. Um, if we can take them a little bit out of the game, uh, diminish uh, the influence of Johnny, I think we can win this game. Mike, um, this is the key moment. This is where you decide uh, to put the boys to sleep. Um, the score for this weekend, so that we can see whether or not you bounce back onto the show next week, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to win by three points. <laughs> win, win by three. Mike, thank you. I appreciate you, sir. Catch you again soon. <laughs> Lovely to be on the show. Thanks. Thank, thank you so much there. Mike Greenaway joining us live from Durban. I can tell you that Stephen Kitsoff, uh, Bongim Bonambi, Franz Malherber, uh, Iban Etzebeth, Franco Mostert, you got Sia Kulisa, the captain, Peter Steph de Doy, uh, Jasper Visa, you got Faf de Clark, you've got Manny Lebarque, Cheslin Colby, Damien Dialendi, uh, Jesse Creel, Kirtley Arons, uh, Damien Willemsa, all of them will be, they'll be yeah. starting. Yeah. They'll be starting. So, so anything, guys, that you want to add on before I, you give me your contribution? I, th I think, you know, you talk about um, losing the ball, so turnovers. So turnovers is forced and unforced. And I think with, with that uh, squad, as it being named in the starting lineup, what you have is you have enforcers. Mm -hmm. And to, uh, to Tando's point earlier in terms of set phases, set phases allows you one, two, three phases after the set piece. So as soon as there's a set piece, then one, two, three phases. And I think with the manpower we have, we can protect the ball at the first phase, second phase, and third Analysis phase. Analysis out yes. the so window. Give me a prediction. What you have is, time. You, you have, uh, Mike's call is very close. I think I'm going to go with, a, with Mike, Mike's call, but maybe make it a seven points South Africa's favor. I so think we, win we've got by seven. seven. Points. Win yeah. by seven. Tanda Banana, just the score. Leave the analysis for when you're driving your phone, <laughs> your family members, and analyze in the car. What's the score? Rob, firstly, it's a 7 1 split. Mm -hmm. They've gone for a 7 1 split. Okay, so can I add that? Not just the starting <laughs> 15 rugby is played by 23 guys. Yes. So 7-1 split. And the I'm prediction happy. is based on your predicting and not <laughs> preaching. I'm looking at the bench. <laughs> Mine is based on looking at the bench to come to a Your prediction, sir. The time is going. I'm saying South Africa by five. South Africa Perfect. by five. Okay. Three, five, seven. Yeah, I was about to say three, five, seven. You guys have gone. And then, about if in the it. middle, who comes back? Who, who stays? <laughs> yeah, we're subject to judges' interpretation. So I think you're very you're teetering on a, a red card right now. Uh, but thank you so much for your contribution, guys. The official bounce back of the room dividers. Uh, do catch us again next week, Tuesday, uh, where we unpack all the latest news and also the analysis. Marwa Sports Worldwide uh, is brought to you by season two of Welcome to Wrexham streaming. Right now on Disney Plus, live at 947 Rise of M, Vuma FM, and Sowetan Live. We'll catch you again tomorrow. Don't you go anywhere. The action and more continues.
It's here, the Rugby World Cup. Springboks with a penalty advantage. Tracked by Marawa every day. Hashtag MSW on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM and Sowetan Live.